You see, these shepherds, they were available. So again, I ask you, are you available? How many of you would say, yeah, I'm available. Who's available? How about we try it this way? How many of you are busy? How many of you are busy? This is audience participation. Raise your hand. We move a lot faster if you participate. Who's busy? Yes, I am too. One of my favorite things to do is to say, hey, you want to get together and do this thing that has absolutely no value or importance or anything like that? Sure. And I'll hand them my phone and say, you find a time, pick the spot. There you go. And they go, oh. It's kind of like when you go to a restaurant and the server comes after your meal and goes, anyone save room for dessert? And you go, oh, I wish I did. I'm, you know, and you make all the excuses in the world not to eat these amazing things. So I've got another question. Anyone save room for God? See, because our schedules get so packed. And I wasn't telling you about my calendar to gloat because it's not necessarily a good thing to always be that busy. But see, when your schedule is so packed and something like your plane gets delayed before a youth convention or <laughs> your wife gets... Uh, into a car accident, or the pro presenter decides not to load your slides right before service, or whatever it is. <laughs> whatever it is. If your morning, if your day, if your schedule, if your life is so busy that you can't handle a speed bump, are you going to have room for God? Are you going to have room? Are you, going to, are you going to be able to do that when he says, hey, I need you to go pray for that person? If you are on such a razor-thin margin of time, you can't stop and be with somebody. See, the Lord corrects me every once in a while when I get too busy because he goes, hey, man, you're so busy doing the church, you forget to connect to the church. And then I realize, oh, man, I'm, I'm doing all the stuff, all these projects and all the things that, that we do because we love you and we serve you. But it means nothing if I'm so busy being Martha that I don't be merry with you guys. So maybe you've got plenty of time in your schedule, but has your attitude made you unavailable? That was the one. I was like, man, I can preach this. And then he said that to me. And I was like, <clears throat> hold on, Lord. Cool, I'm going to put that down for them because I know you're talking to them and not me. Has your attitude made you unavailable? Because you may have all the time in the world, but you're a sourpuss. I'm not calling you if the shoe fits. I'm not pointing anyone out. But really, if you've got all the time in the world, but nobody wants to be around you because you've got a sour attitude, isn't it the same thing as being too busy? See, we're never too busy to work. How many of you are too busy to go to work? See, nobody raised their hand. <laughs> Some of you want to be too busy. In the last two months, who's too been too busy for friends? And I chose this picture because I, I like how he's flexing. That's, that's kind of me. Who's been too busy for family? Like extended family. Who's been too busy for their spouse or their kids? See, in all these areas, we're called to ministry, guys. And if we're too busy to do ministry in all of these areas, then what are we doing? When we're busy with the mundane, we aren't available for the miraculous. When we're busy with the mundane, we aren't available for the miraculous. You see, the shepherds, they were available. And I'm sure they didn't feel like getting up after guarding stinky sheep all day. Getting up and walking to see this kid that they never met. To be with these two people that they've never met. 
But because they were available, they experienced the miraculous. Could you imagine being among the first people on this planet outside of Mary and Joseph to see the Son of God? But if we're too busy, if we're locked up at night in our house, all snuggled in, and we say, no thanks, Lord, who are we hurting? Have you been too busy for Jesus? Jesus. 